Let me see, let me see. Ah, the groaning board, the teeming table, the endless variety of God's bounty. <laughs> Chefing is a truly perfect art, far above mere painting or sculpture. You can't eat a sheet of canvas or a lump of rock. Oh, no. You could if you were drunk enough and had enough ketchup. <laughs> Morning, Richie. Do my senses deceive me? Has Eddie Catrap emerged from the arms of Morpheus? Or perhaps a nearby elephant has blown off? No. Right first time in his eye, smelly Eddie. To whiff him, Mr. Love him. Ready for anything as long as it's alcoholic. Morning, Richie. There's my shopping list. Gas mask. <laughs> <laughs> Now then, shall we have seven courses or eight? Don't want to look ostentatious. On the other hand, don't want to look like a bloody pauper. <laughs> Better make it twelve. We can always be like the Romans and throw up between courses. You know, I don't see why the Romans should get all that credit for that idea. I mean, I've been doing it for years. Morning, Richie. <clears throat> twelve gas masks. <laughs> Close peg for nose, smelling salts, and a one-way ticket to Australia to get away from Eddie's whiff. I said morning, Richie! <laughs> I got you then, didn't I? I got you! Uh, morning, Eddie. I trust you slept well? Fantastic! A truly great sleep! On the scale of one to five, five million four hundred and twenty-nine thousand five hundred and sixty-two. You find sleeping face down in the toilet conducive to wrestle slumber. <laughs> and why shouldn't I sleep in the lavatory? You wet the bed! <laughs> once! Once, I, I had a terrible nightmare that I was ordinary and untalented. And there was a momentary aberration. It's a sign of having an extra vivid subconscious. It's a sign of having an extra drippy tiddler. <laughs> Eddie, I was having a nightmare that I was a pleb. It was a horrifying experience. I remember the night so well. I awoke to hear Richie screaming into the middle of the night. Ah, his heart rending sobs echoing round the house. Why, you wept like a soul in torment. I rushed in to find poor, frightened Richie, shivering, terrified, white, sitting in a puddle. Yes, and what did you do? I don't remember. You switched on my electric blanket. <laughs> Only to take your mind off the nightmare. You completely electrocuted my love truncheon. <laughs> love truncheon? Love pencil, more like. Well, love pin, actually. Eddie, what's this? <laughs> I don't know. One of my scary looks, isn't it? Is it really? <laughs> my intimidating frown, so you just watch out. Has the hair grown back yet? Your love blobs look like Yul Brenner snogging with Kojak. I'm not prepared to rise to it, Eddie. Your spite and venom offends me not. Baldy blobs. Right, that's it. No, seriously, that is it. I hope you've got a good lawyer, Edward Catflap, because I'm suing and you're going to prison forever. Hello, Filthy. Yeah, it's Richie here. I want to sue Eddie. Richie Rich. Your client. Well, I'm about five foot ten, brown hair. It's a look, it's not important. My minder, Edward, says that I've got bald love blobs and I want to sue. <laughs> Have I? Well, they're not so much bald as receding, are they? Well, I could put a wig on them for the trial. Bloodsucker, what am I paying you for? I know I don't. It was a rhetorical question. <laughs> Goodbye forever. He was furious. <laughs> But I persuaded him to give you another chance. Oh, shut up, Richie. And tell me why you are wearing a hat that makes you look like you've got a toilet roll on your head. Because, Eddie, I have taken up the skillet and the frying pan. I've been studying cookery all morning. And I am now a master chef. That's why I'm wearing this great hat. Well, you look like a chicken drumstick. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> wrong again, because actually I look great. <laughs> We are having a dinner party. Oh! Eight for 8.30. The food, the fine wine, the, the little chocolatey minty fingers. Uh, who's coming? Oh, just one or two close personal friends. Oh, dear. The man from the dirty mag shop and wino Bill, again. <laughs> you really are insanely jealous, aren't you, Edward? I keep forgetting, of course, you're not in the biz, are you? <laughs> The huge, fantastic galaxy of showbiz stars are all brothers and sisters to me. Tarby, for instance, is bound to accept. Especially after the brilliant invitations I sent out. <laughs> the years and the tears. Come and celebrate Richie Rich's ten fabulous years of success. How sad. From third dummy in the window on Are You Being Served to his very own carpet ad. Look, I'm not sitting at the same table as Tarby, and that's that. 
No, Eddie, no, no, no. We're talking about Jimmy Tarbuck. <laughs> Cheeky chap from the pool. Everybody's pal. But jolly gap tooth scouser with a twinkle in his eye and a smile for every honest Englishman. Look, if there's one thing I hate in British entertainment more than you, it's that vast army of ex stand up comics who did one half funny gag on Sunday night at the London Palladium in the middle 60s and have made a fortune doing game shows ever since. Oh, good evening! And your name is Cynthia, and you'd like me to patronise and humiliate you on the off chance of winning a cheese made. Chicken <laughs> chappies? More like complete and utter bastards, if you ask me. Yes, I don't think anyone will be asking you, will they, Eddie? Tarby is just a simple jester. An honest broker from the Bank of Smiles. Well, I was only saying so to Marty Kane just now before her last trip to South Africa. <laughs> so I'll thank you to keep your embittered communistic treason to yourself during tonight's intercourse with Tarby and friends. <laughs> I am not having intercourse with Tarby, I'm not final. <laughs> well, what a surprise! Four minutes into the episode and Eddie Capdrap delivers the most tortuous old double entendre in history. <laughs> it was a great gag! Social intercourse, Eddie. Social. Oh, phew. We shall talk about subjects far above your head. Poetry. <laughs> fine arts. Golf. Oh, that reminds me. I must bone up on Tarby's book of golfing anecdotes. They are the greatest work of English since Dick. Oh, uh. Dick Inns, Eddie. Dick Inns. <laughs> oh, uh. There's only one thing I hate more than golfing anecdotes, and it's this. <laughs> it's a close run thing, though. Uh, 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 uh. This is brilliant stuff. This is classic, classic, classic. Well done, Tarby. Oh. Oh, listen to this one. Oh. <laughs> listen, 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 shut up, shut up. Lynchy and I had taken time off and flown to Spain with Greavesy and Parky and Tom O'Connery to play some golf with Leslie. Leslie? Yeah. They were playing golf with lesbians. <laughs> Fantastic. Do you think Tarbuck's a feminist, then? Leslie Cribery, Eddie. Leslie Cribery. <laughs> He's just another one of the great guys that make up my fantastic showbiz gang that I belong to and you don't. <laughs> uh, shut up, I'm telling you the great anecdote. <clears throat> Lynchy lined up to tee off. Well, I wish you'd bloody tee off and leave me to spread my bags in peace. Lynchy lined up to tee off and said to me, Gosh, Tarbo, we swigged so much pot last night being great guys together and being such great big showbiz mates, but I bet I missed this next shot. And blow me down, but he did. He missed it. <laughs> ooh, 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 ha, ha, ha. ooh, ha, ha. Oh, touche, Tarby! Oh, that was brilliant. No, the same thing has happened to me fumpty times. Well, I can see it's going to be a pretty scintillating evening with everyone cracking Brillo gags like that one. Yeah. Hey, maybe there's a series in it. Dinner at Riches. An ultra sophist chat show. <gasps> Good evening, this is the BBC. Tonight, Sir Richie Rich will be talking to uh, the Queen, the Pope, and of course, the Tarby. <laughs> In a fair disaster, you get completely drunk and make a pass at the Pope for wearing a dress. <laughs> Bloody good telly, though. True. So, what incredible 12 courses are you going to cook for these fantastically amiable showbiz chums of yours? <laughs> well, we must play to our strengths. We must not overreach ourselves. Right, yes. <sighs> How does 12 ball legs sound? Uh, usually like this. <laughs> <laughs> nice gang, Eddie, and totally unexpected. Yeah. Perhaps a little sophisticated for BBC Two, though. Yeah. I can just see it now. How's the golf going, Tobbs? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Do you want to hear a really stupid joke about an Irishman being stupid? <laughs> oh, wait. Well, what do you suggest, then? You're supposed to be my friend, you vicious freeloading parasite! Smelly heading to the rescue! When I was watching TV AM in the lab this morning, I saw this fantastic ad for a new man called Ponzi Cooking. And when you buy part one, you get part two completely free. Well, that sounds like a marvellous offer, Edward, and one not to be missed. Well, actually, it's just a rather clumsy setup for a gag later on. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's go to the news agents anyway. Okay, you know, keep the squat, over we go. Don't ever say I'm not there when I'm not needed. You're not there when you're not needed. <laughs> Thank you. Ready, Eddie? Ready, ready. Let's go. Blimey. 
The news agents has got a lot closer since we moved into a smaller studio. <laughs> shut up, Eddie, shut up. You're spoiling the magic for everyone. Oh, oh, oh. look, the news agent. <clears throat> Hello, my old darling. Yep, it's me, Richie Rich. Uh -huh. Don't faint. Treasure of a moment. Here's a pig. Put it in the box you keep for precious things and show your kids. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'm sure. One of the cool ties, are we? Gonna boast to your friends, are you? I met Richie Rich this morning and I pretended I didn't recognise him. Hee hee hee. What a sad little life you must live. Are you mad? That's what I say, Yes. Excuse me. Do you have part one of Ponzi cooking with part two completely free? Certainly. One pound, please. Aha! I'm afraid I have no money, so I'll just take part two for nothing, shall I? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha Stupid slag! Come on, Richie! One pound, please. Uh, 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 I'll give you a mention on my next programme. I shall send to the police. No, you won't, darling, because your part's over. Yes, yeah, the end of your scene. Back to the doll for you, love. Five lines, thank you, and good night. <laughs> Well, I must say, this looks very interesting. It's fine, you know. That, Eddie, is the biz. It's a tough life. It's a tough life, dearie. I mean, look at Arthur Mullard. She used to be quite attractive. Oh, I still quite fancy her. Yeah. <laughs> well, I must say, this is very interesting. Yeah. Must learn to read sometime. <laughs> right. Sort of this health food. When I eat, I like to dice with a heart attack. Let's have a good traditional English roast. We have a coronary from basis to follow. Right, let's make a shopping list. Yeah. 400 pounds of oven chips. Right, well, that seems simple enough. Yeah. <laughs> Better check the larder first. Waste not, want not. Always remember there are poor children in the world. Oh, the little poor children. Yeah. <laughs> With their cosy little terrace dwellings. A roaring fire. Bread, cheese. Dripping. <laughs> Add a little love, makes a meal, meal fit, fit for a king. king. <laughs> How does he think they're happier being poor? Yes, or perhaps not. Oh, well, who gives a toss anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Let's check what's in the lot. Any food? Um, only a couple of dirty mags. <laughs> yeah. So that's the reason why we shouldn't be doing this side. Just can't quite put my finger on it at the moment. Try not to tax, overtax your tiny mind, Eddie. At the moment, it's concentrating on breathing. <clears throat> oh, shut up, you stupid slag. The text in the post. Yeah, who the hell's going to make this anyway? I'm the famous one, love. <laughs> Come, Eddie. Let us go to the supermarket. Right. <laughs> what a rotten shop. Is there anything you want to buy? For example, <laughs> Crusoe's. Bite-sized, cruise missile-shaped lumps of potato-flavoured snack. <laughs> Warning, this product gives you cancer. Right, everything gives you cancer these days. You can't blow off without someone telling you it's carcinogenic. <laughs> Mind you, my case, I think it probably is. Probably. Oh, careful, Eddie, you'll get grabbed by the dick. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> we really didn't get arrested by the store detective viewers. It was just a pun we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> we have every intention of paying for this item. Every intention. Ooh, Eddie, Ooh. It'd be funny if somebody knocked that lot down, wouldn't it? <laughs> Not particularly, no. I'm disappointed myself. Come and eat for fruit. <laughs> it is, of course, the absolute sophist thing to offer fruit at the end of the meal. So refreshing, and of course it comes in jolly handy for the sex games. Mm, yeah. <laughs> And bruised. I shall ride west to Ransom. Ah, for meat, Eddie. Ha, load up a trolley full. They'll have been playing golf all day, so they'll be ready for some hearty vitals. <laughs> Just look at this little lamb chop. It was probably once a pig gambling about <laughs> the mountain. Yeah. Dying, you dying, you dying. <laughs> you know, Eddie, I could quite fancy myself as a farmer. Where is a good job you do fancy yourself? Because I can't see that anyone else is going to do it. <laughs> Eddie, do you see this frozen chicken? Uh, yes. Oh, oh. Perhaps I had a frozen tackle to teach you not to cheat Richie Rich. Richie Rich, do you see this frozen chicken? No, I think you do. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, touche, Eddie. <laughs> Come on, let's go and pay for the staff. I've just remembered why it is we shouldn't be here. We have no cash. Eddie, I am a celebrity. <laughs> Celebrities don't need money. Next. <laughs>
Boo! Hello, love. It's me, Richie Rich. Uh -huh. Look, it's just this pack of the cancer crunch and a trolley full of meat. Let us off and I'll give you a mention on my next probe. Two hundred pounds, please. <sighs> my dear girl, you don't seem to understand. I, Richie Rich, am offering you... Nobody, a minch on my next brogue. Right, I can see this is going to require some subtle handling. <laughs> How does it feel to know that you're a checkout gal and you've reached the peak of your potential? How does it feel to know that you're a talentless guest and you never even had any potential? I see. 200 pounds, please. <clears throat> <laughs> Stitch that. <laughs> Hi, me, Richie. I think you're on there. I know. Come on when I see it. For God's sake, this is ridiculous. Somebody here tell Donkey Face who I am. We don't know. Who are you? You jest. You deep. I am one of Britain's top comic talents. Say something funny, then. Yeah. If you're so funny, Richie, why don't you say something funny? Just go on. Say something funny. All right, then. All right. I will. I will. Um. Plop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Damn, he's timed it. Mr. Forsyth. Listen, bitch. I was once continuity leak man on TVS. I don't see why I should have to pay for my food. Listen, dickhead. No money, no food. <laughs> you know, you're the sort of girl I could really fall in love with. However, no time because Richie. Yes. Run. <laughs> Through the door. Uh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I thought they'd never give up. That Mr. Forsyth certainly had some stamina. <sighs> Still safe and sound at home now, and plenty of time to get on with my wonderful dinner party. That's what you think. But I have been thinking. Well, well, well. Wonders will never cease. Eddie Carplab's been thinking. Put out some bunting. Organise a street party. Let off some fireworks. Telephone the Queen. Give everyone a week's holiday. The man with no brains been thinking. Everybody go to the lavatory in amazement. I don't know how you wound, Richie. You really don't. However, no matter, because you will soon be in pris. Pris? Pris on. You have just aided and abetted a robbery in front of Mr. Forsyth and 50 <sighs> mad checkout girls. <sighs> I, of course, am all right. I was just the mysteriously handsome bloke in the huge attractive trousers who vanished without a trace. But you, you're Richie Rich, and you'll be going to praise. You're not all right, darling. You're not all right, because I shall squeal. Yeah, I shall sing and, and blab, and then I might even spill a little bit. <sighs> and I shall buy a lighter sentence with the names of my accomplices, to wit, Edward Catflap. And then I shall have a facelift so you can't exact your blood-curdling revenge. You'd need a forklift truck to lift your face, matey. <laughs> well, at least I've got a face, not a sort of collage of bogeys and sick. <laughs> Just because you never get any girlfriends, you think you can take it out on me? Me? You never get any girlfriends? Ha, that's rich. It's you, you never get any girlfriends. I was out with a girl last Wednesday. Eddie, that was your mother. <laughs> I still got a snog. <laughs> snog? Well... More of a fight, really. She beat me senseless. Oh, she beat you senseless? That must have taken at least ten seconds. Fifteen seconds, actually, Richie. Eddie, we are about to be sent to Devil's Island for a thousand years. Tommy's coming round for the most important dinner party of my life, and you're babbling on about your insane mother. We're up block freak with no loo brush. I'll telephone my agent. That's a good idea. Let's blame him. Yeah. Hey, what if you won't take the rap? Tell him we'll go to the papes about his children's catalogue. Nice thinking. <laughs> Hello, filthy. Yeah, God bless. Look after Mum. Drive safely. Listen, you filthy, evil porno merchant. Me and Eddie are in deep trouble. And unless you take the blame, we'll tell the world the truth about your so-called stage school. Please, daughter, please. Please. Listen, I'm not a well man. This morning I coughed so hard I sucked my trousers up my backside. <laughs> Now listen, listen, Richie. Nobody needs to take the rap for this. What you have got to get yourself is an alibi. Yeah, no, don't shout, daughter. Don't shout. There's only so much an agent can take after only one bottle of aspirin. <laughs> now look, Richie, alibis are easy. You're a comic, right? Well, loosely speaking, of course. <laughs> yeah, you were doing a show. 
No, 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 that's easy. All we have to do is to get you a real show tonight, and then Eddie can crawl around, surreptitiously turn all the audience's watches back to the time you blagged the store. <laughs> yes, yes, I oh, know, just the venue. Tray chic, tray boner. Yeah, only the nicest young ladies need apply. Filthy. What if Tarby finds out? I shall be thrown out of the Royal Order of the Charitable Self-Publicising Showbiz Borgotters. Don't worry about the Borgotters, Richie. They were in here themselves half an hour ago, but they had to leave because they ran out of 50p. <laughs> How's my boy Richie doing? I wouldn't want to face that audience, Richie. They're getting a bit restive at the moment. Trying to see if bouncers really do bounce. <laughs> oh, either the act did would. Richard has got enough to concern him already, what with being crap. <laughs> anyway, I thought you were supposed to be running around the audience turning their watches back while they ogled the girlies. Well, I was trying to, filthy, but the hands are moving too quickly. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's it. Richie, you're on. Oh, my God, I'm not ready. Have I looked at him? <laughs> not good, daughter. Tray, tray bollocks. He's absolutely bloody right, you know. Pity stands. Oh, I better get on with my superstitions. <laughs> what are you doing, Richard? <laughs> my superstition. Whenever Titch, who am Adam, don't start me off juicy, went on stage, he always did this. But Titch Juicy was notoriously awful. God, you're right. <laughs> uh, boys and girls, lads and lesses, uh, please welcome to the stage a very funny man indeed. Uh, the world famous Mr. Uh, Richie Rich. <laughs> with his hand up sandbox's blouse. Show your tits. <laughs> but seriously, folks, the good Lord gave us one good present, and that was the gift of laughter. Get off! <laughs> and thank God the likes of Tony Ben can't take that away from us, although he'd probably like to, wouldn't he? Get off the joke then, you fat bastard! <laughs> hey, I hear Arthur Scargill's blind stick lost his hairdresser. You have to laugh, don't you? Uh, two, three, four. Happy <laughs> man! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you, one and all. The greatest thing that I possess: the smile of a child, a beautiful woman, just simply being British. And let's thank the mums too, shall we? Hello to all the mums here to keep an eye on Dad, are you? It's not going very well, is it? <laughs> Thank you and good night, one and all. I love you all. Well, tough crowd, but I think I got the measure of them. <laughs> well, that's kind. They probably couldn't afford flowers. This <laughs> probably do for our nice dinner party. Petrie, I've got some rather bad news for you. You're under arrest. That's the bad news. Oh, come on, I wasn't that bad. I may have stumbled on a couple of bucks tonight. It was our alibi. It collapsed. Mr. Forsyth, he followed us down here. It's press for us. Are you coming quietly, sir? No, it's just the way I walk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't back down. I want my public to know that as you led me to the block, I was still cracking woofers. Very well, sir. Uh, did you say woofers or ancient old dude long song that everybody else gave up in the playground? Oh, what a clever thing to say! <laughs> How brainy you are! Got a degree, have you? Just because you earn four times as much as a nurse, you've been getting cheap, richy rich, do you? <laughs> <laughs> now, that's what I like to say. A good old-fashioned Bobby. <laughs> Don't worry, Wishy. These days, prison food is quite acceptable. Mind you, it's not so nice when they nail you to the table and shove it up your backside. <laughs> uh, well, Eddie, the long and winding road is over. The great god public claims another weary showbiz victim. Oscar Wilde, playwright, arrested for his beliefs. 
Lenny Bruce, comedian, arrested for his beliefs. Richie Rich, celebrity, arrested for going nicking down the local shop. <laughs> <sighs> It'll be the trial of a century. I shall be tried in majestic splendour by a jury of my peers. Parky, Carby, Lynchy, Sue Lawley, Annie Dundee, <laughs> Debbie Greenwoody, Selena Scotty, <laughs> Maggie Phil Beeley. Yeah, yeah, what a fantastic jury! Hey, we might even be on for a bit of a sex sesh after the trial. Yeah, it's all right. Said, of course, you won't be there because you'll be in prison. <laughs> I'll be all right, though. I'm going to plead insanity. Damn, let's face it, you've got the evidence. Let me out! I need a lawyer! I want my lawyer! <laughs> Shout, Richie. It oscillates the atmos and rattles my phlegm. I found you a lawyer. Who? Met him outside, known him for years. Spurty. Pervy Sir Peter Spurty, you <laughs> see. Bit of luck in being here, really. You'll get anyone off if you buy him a dirty mag. <laughs> you remember when the whole Tory cabinet were found in that child brothel discussing declining moral values? Clear as a bell. Pervy Sir Peter Spurty got them off. Right. He's a man for us. Bring us our lawyer. We demand Pervy Sir Pete. In there, Spurty. Blimey, that was quick. Well done, the police say I. Why these left-wing committees keep sniping at them is beyond me. If you don't want to get beaten up, you shouldn't be poor. It's as simple as that. Richie, shut up. Watch your spurty. Me and my mate Richie are in a bit of a fix and are going to end up doing five to ten in a slammer. Unless you can stitch the jury, rig the judge and buy off the pigs with a serious kickback. Please, please, please. This is England, Eddie. England. Not Birmingham. <laughs> And the British Bobby cannot be bought. You, show your face. Sorry. What are you offering? I am not offering anything. You must speak to my lawyer. What? Old pervy spurty. <laughs> right, now, uh, everything seems to be in order here. Uh, I would stand by you, Richie, but lost causes depress me. <coughs> Toodly woodly. Right, spurty. Do your stuff. Your honour. I wandered into a garden under the impression it was my garden. And on seeing various items of women's laundry hanged on the line, I naturally assumed that my wife had done some washing and I began to gather it in for her. The fact that I live in a high-rise flat and am not mine is entirely circumstantial evidence and hence inadmissible. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we'd better escape. And fly in the face of Leon Britain's Law and Order Initiative? Never! There is no choice! The meat is in my trousers, Tommy is coming round in a couple of hours to hear his fantastic golfing anecdote, and you're banged up in the slammer! Don't be disgusting! I have never been banged up the slammer in my life! <laughs> you're right, we've got to escape. I have a plan. What we have to do is set up a complicated system of stooges to find out exactly what the guards are up to. Then, we dig three tunnels and hide the dirt in our trousers. We forge some German documents and make the clothes of some French peasant workers out of these blankets. It's a great night for dying! Then we wheel the wooden horse out into the exercise yard. Yes. We build a glider and we pole vault over the fence. What do you think? Pathetic. Let's do it then. Yeah! I'm sorry I doubted you. Your plan worked brilliantly. Yes. Shame about old Spurty getting shot by the Gestapo. <laughs> no, the SPG, Eddie. The SPG, not the Gestapo. They're completely different things. The Gestapo, um, speak German. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, well, all right, and that's all that matters. Of course it is, Eddie. Safe and sound at home now, and perhaps now I can get on with preparing for my fantastic dinner party. Oh. Empty the big trousers! Okie dokie, me old spunky cockspar! <laughs> now then, I've invited Tarby, Lynchy, Parky, Brucey, Tommy O'Connery, and you and me. Have we sufficient comestibles? Oh, well, uh, I don't know about that, but here's the grub. <laughs> Good Lord, Eddie, how did you get so much meat in your trousers? <laughs> That's what all the girls say. <laughs> Smart is the last recourse of the emotional cripple, Eddie. It's a psychological truism, but people talk about that which they cannot do. Oh, and is that why you're always talking about acting, plot pants? <laughs> Perhaps there is a 
the land beyond the oblivion of brain death, Eddie, where your cryptic observations would be understood. But to us earthlings, they are mere mashed potatoes. So keep them to yourself! Richie, it's your choice. I can either stuff the meat into the oven, you into the oven, or the oven into you. Which is it to me? The former. This one was that. Well, that was the one where the oven meat. went in. Look, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Tarby's coming round in ten minutes and we haven't cooked the thing. Let's please get this stuff in the oven. Right, yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, I'll never get it all in. Oh, huh? Sounds a bit rude. <laughs> I'm going to need something to lever it in with. Oh, ah, sounds a bit rhoda. <laughs> no matter how much I stuff him, there's still loads more waiting to be pushed in. Oh, ah, it sounds a bit rhoda than it was before. <laughs> Thank you for these observations, Eddie. I just feel that every culinary exchange should be accompanied by the mad rantings of a brain-dead vegetable. Right, there we are. It's a light. <laughs> Here, I bought you a bottle of wine, but I drank it in a taxi. <laughs> oh, God, I forgot I'd invited you, filthy. You're hardly going to impress my showbiz friends. I'd be impressed if you had any friends, Richie. Right, that's it. I'm, I'm serious, that's it. Your invitation's withdrawn. Go away now. Oh, go on, daughter. Do me a favour. <gasps> Where's your sense of humour? Only a bijou joke it. Who? Joke? Oh. <laughs> of course I'll impress your friends. We'll make a bone a little tea. The financial artist. The theatrical artist. And the piss artist. <laughs> it's going to be a truly magical evening. <laughs> right, those candles burned down first. I'll oh, keep it to yourself, Eddie. Much time has passed. Oh, I'm swathed in melancholic pay fast. <laughs> oh, uh. Shut up, Eddie. I think you've been stood up, Richie. Oh, uh. <laughs> Oh, shut up, Eddie. <laughs> After all I've done, I've done a show in a peep show, I've robbed a supermarket, I've been to prison, and the rotters haven't even turned up. Fate deals me blow after blow. Oh, uh. <laughs> What time did you put on the invites, love? Well, eight o'clock. Look, I've got them here. Tarbies, Bruce's, Lynch's, and... <laughs> I forgot to post the invites. 